Hi, it's Katrina. Number nine, Kassar Dra. A Kassar is a North African term for a fortified desert village in the middle of nowhere. It's typically used in reference to a settlement belonging to the Berbers, an ethnic group which is indigenous to the region. Kassars are commonly seen across the Maghreb region, which includes Morocco, Algeria, and Tunisia. One known as Kassar Dra is reportedly in Timimun, Algeria, although information about it is scarce online, making it even more mysterious than most. Most Kassars are mysterious by default because of their placement in the middle of the desert on purpose. They function as oases, as places of relief from the unforgivingly harsh and arid climate, and are often known for their unique and beautiful architecture. In the Maghreb, Kassars often consist of attached houses, as well as a mosque, bath, oven, and other structures. They're typically made from adobe and are characterized by a single continuous wall. While most Kassars are located in the Sahara, some can be found in the mountains. Detectives on Reddit, trying to figure these places out, proposed the possibility that round Kassars like the one in this picture were built by ancient Jewish kingdoms, while Muslim Kassars were supposedly in the shape of a polygon with five sides. While it's true that there were significant Jewish communities throughout the Maghreb, it's hard to verify whether they built any Kassars, or which ones. To make things even more confusing, the Berbers were originally a Jewish people. At some point in time, most of them converted to Islam, although some chose to remain Jewish. Most modern-day Berbers are Sunni Muslim, although some are practitioners of other factions of Islam. Today, there are an estimated 8,000 descendants of Berber Jews living in modern-day Morocco. Number 8. Rupkund There are as many as 800 skeletons at Rupkund Lake. Also known as Skeleton Lake, it is located 16,500 feet above sea level in the Indian Himalayas. Measuring 130 feet across and about 10 feet deep, this glacial lake is beautiful but it is also littered with human remains that have accumulated over hundreds, if not thousands of years. Why do so many people die here? The human remains are only visible during the one month of the year that it thaws. In addition to the multitude of bones, the site contains iron spearheads, leather slippers, wooden items, and rings. Until recently, the origins of the human remains at Rupkund were unknown. Reports of the skeletons date as far back as the 9th century but the site wasn't rediscovered until 1942. Researchers have been baffled by the site ever since. They initially assumed that everybody had died at the same time in a single catastrophic event about 1,000 years ago. But a new study that came out in 2019 is telling an entirely different and infinitely more confusing story. Experts performed a DNA analysis on 38 of the individuals found at Rupkund. They identified 23 males and 15 females, who died over a roughly 1,000-year span. The findings completely upend the theory that a single tragic event killed everyone. 23 people who died or were buried in the lake between the 7th and 10th centuries were found to be of South Asian ancestry. Between the 17th and 20th centuries, the remains of 14 individuals of Eastern Mediterranean ancestry and one person of East Asian ancestry died at Rupkund. People from all over came here and apparently risked their lives. Scientists have not yet identified any causes of death, but it's probably more than safe to say that not everyone died from the same cause. One huge lingering question is how and why people of Eastern Mediterranean descent ended up at the lake. They certainly weren't Hindu pilgrims, yet Rupkund is located along a major pilgrimage route. Like many studies, these findings pose more questions than answers. Number 7. Las Lunas Mystery Stone 35 miles south of Albuquerque in the remote desert of west-central New Mexico, a large boulder sits on the side of a mountain, bearing inscriptions in a language that nobody understands. It goes by several names, including the Los Lunas Mystery Stone, the Decalogue Stone, and the Commandments Rock. The boulder appeared in literature for the first time in 1933, when archaeologist Frank Hibben wrote about seeing it while on a tour. The tour leader claimed to have discovered the boulder during the 1880s, but nobody knows for sure when people first learned about it. Hibben claimed that the text was pre-Columbian, but his credibility was called into question when it became evident that he changed some of his archaeological data to fit his theories. That's convenient. 
Others have suggested that the text is Paleo-Hebrew or Cypriotic Greek. The 80-ton boulder has never been studied in a lab because of how difficult it would be to move, and people have cleaned the inscriptions many times over the years, complicating the possibility of an accurate scientific analysis. But studying the stone academically could prove to be a colossal waste of time anyway, if you ask some people, who believe that it's a hoax created by Hibben himself. And maybe he never even found anything to begin with. Number 6. Uluru Also known as Ayers Rock, Uluru is a large, isolated sandstone formation in Australia's Northern Territory. It's located 208 miles from the nearest large town of Alice Springs, and is surrounded by watering holes, springs, rock caves, and ancient artwork. Measuring 1,142 feet high, with a perimeter of 5.8 miles, it's certainly a sight to behold. Uluru is one of Australia's most sacred and important Aboriginal sites. To scientists, it's a fascinating geological feature known as an Inselberg, or an island mountain. Inselbergs are usually found in dry, flat regions and are characterized by an isolated knob or a hill that juts out from the land below it. The massive formation started out as sand, which condensed to form sandstone. The layers of sand were deposited horizontally between 300 and 400 million years ago. They were turned nearly vertical during a later episode of mountain building. Uluru was once home to 46 known native mammal species. That number has dropped to 21 and includes seven bat species. There are six invasive creatures at the site, including mice, camels, foxes, cats, dogs, and rabbits. Activists are campaigning for the reintroduction of locally extinct animals, such as the rufous hare wallaby, the bilby, the mallee fowl, the common brush-tailed possum, burrowing betong, and the black-flanked rock wallaby. There are many aboriginal myths and legends tied to Uluru, including creation stories and stories about the area still being inhabited by ancestral spiritual beings. One tale claims that two boys were playing in the mud after a rainfall. Then they began to fight, and their bodies were preserved as large boulders. In another story, serpent beings engaged in harsh warfare around Uluru, resulting in the scarring of the rock that is visible today in the form of cracks and crevices. Visitors are cautioned against taking rocks or other souvenirs at the risk of becoming cursed and suffering severe misfortune. Many people claim to have learned this lesson the hard way, with some even mailing back their mementos in hopes of reversing the alleged curse. Do you believe you can get cursed by taking something from a famous site? Let me know in the comments! Number 5. Wash Woods Settlement Wash Woods was a small settlement on a barrier island along the southeastern Virginia coast. Legend claims that a group of shipwreck survivors established the town centuries ago after abandoning their vessel and wading ashore. But the origins of Wash Woods are largely shrouded in mystery. Several of the settlement's buildings, including a Methodist church, were built with cypress wood from a schooner that ran aground in 1895. By 1900, Wash Woods contained a school, two churches, a life-saving station, and a grocery store. Its population peaked at around 300 residents who worked as farmers, fishermen, hunting guides, and lifesavers who helped save people from other wrecked ships. Life wasn't easy here. Throughout its entire existence, the town encountered severe weather, which often saw the land inundated with ocean water. Moreover, with no roads in or out of the settlement, Wash Woods was rather isolated. By the 1920s, the area was being flooded so often that people began to leave. In 1933, a destructive Category 4 hurricane pushed any remaining residents out. Today, the ruins are part of False Cape State Park. All that's left of Wash Woods are the steeple from the Methodist Church, a small cemetery, and the former Coast Guard station. Would you want to live in an isolated town on a barrier island? Do you know of any other areas along the coast of the US or other countries with similar settlements? Let me know in the comments below, and be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. We've got lots more videos coming up. Number 4. Ancient Rock Art Canadian archaeologist Ernie Walker has been studying the Nuo Asiniac site north of Saskatoon since the early 1980s, when he first found bones and other artifacts there. For some reason, 
It seemed like he just somehow knew that there were valuable discoveries waiting to be made. He carried his work on into the present day, and it's paid off immensely. Last year, archaeologists found four petroglyphs at the site, which is now a park. One of the pieces, called a ribstone, is a 500-pound stone that was carved to resemble an animal's rib. Another, weighing 750 pounds, bears a grid-like pattern. The largest of the four is a boulder that weighs 1,200 pounds, which hasn't been removed from the ground yet. Walker also found a rare stone knife beside the rocks. The petroglyphs probably date back to a culture and time that predates the arrival of Europeans to the Americas, according to Walker. But who actually found this? He credits a bison herd that lives on the parkland. After the animals kicked up some dirt one day, Walker noticed the top of a boulder poking out of the ground. He says if it weren't for them, he may not have ever found the ancient rock art at all. Number 3. The Katsuki Pillar One of the world's most sacred and isolated churches sits atop the Katsuki Pillar, a 130-foot-tall limestone monolith in the country of Georgia. There are no trains to this far-flung destination, which sits 125 miles west of the capital of Tbilisi. The only options for getting there are by either driving or taking a bus, followed by a 20-minute hike and a climb up a steep, half-finished staircase to the monastery at the base of the pillar. The church that sits atop the massive rock column was built between the 9th and 10th centuries in dedication to Maximus the Confessor, a 7th-century Christian monk who was known for his controversial views. In addition to the church, the site consists of a burial chamber, a wine cellar, and three hermit chambers. Only monks are allowed to make the 20-minute climb up the thin metal ladder to the top, which they do daily because they like to pray where they feel closer to God. By banning the public from accessing the site, the monastery physically protects the buildings and also preserves their holiness. Monks lived at the site starting in the 10th or 11th century, but none live there now. Visitors are also not allowed inside the ground-level monastery, but there are other buildings that they can explore. While there's an unavoidable mysteriousness that comes along with not being able to see what's on top of Katsuki Pillar firsthand, the monks walk the grounds freely. They are happy to speak with guests, and there is a lot to learn from them. Number 2. Strange Stone Balls Hundreds of polished stone balls dating back to the Neolithic era have been found throughout Scotland and the Orkney Islands, as well as England, Ireland, and Norway. Some are covered in protrusions, others are carved with ornate designs, and some are simply polished smooth. It took experts a long time to figure out what the balls were probably used for. At first, they assumed the spheres were weapons, but now they think that the balls were artistic and that they perhaps symbolized someone's social ranking or were used to mark an important part of their life. In September, archaeologists discovered two polished stone balls on the island of Sande in the Orkney Archipelago. They were found in tombs along with several ancient knives that may have been used for ritually cutting the remains of the dead. Dating back roughly 5,500 years, one of the spheres is made from black stone and the other is made from lighter colored limestone. They are simpler than some of the elaborately decorated spheres that came later on in the Neolithic era, as archaeologist Vicky Cummings pointed out in a life science interview, but they are beautiful nonetheless. Number 1. The Eye of the Sahara Nicknamed the Eye of the Sahara, the Richat structure is an eroded geological dome located on the Adrar Plateau in Mauritania. Measuring 25 miles in diameter, it exposes layers of igneous and sedimentary rock, which are arranged in concentric circles. The rocks near the center of the bullseye formation are older than the outer layers, and layers that were once connected have been separated by visible shifting faults. The Richat structure can be seen from space, and early astronauts used it as a geographical marker while passing over the Sahara. There are only 3.7 million people living in Mauritania. Most of them reside along the Atlantic coast, roughly 300 miles from the eye of the Sahara. The remote geological oddities' origins have long been a topic of debate. Scientists originally believed it was an impact crater of some sort, perhaps created by a space object that crashed into the Earth. But research from the 1950s and 60s indicated that the eye was formed by terrestrial processes, 
In other words, it was carved out by some earthly phenomenon or a thing rather than an object from space. A 2011 study concluded that low temperature thermal waters were the force at play. Artifacts found around the structure's outermost depression consisted of simple hand tools that were used by our early hominid relative, Homo erectus. Scientists truly don't know much about the Reichat structure or its history of human use. They'll have to investigate more if they want to continue learning exactly what it is, how it formed, and any significance it may have had to early humans. Thanks for watching! Be sure to hit that subscribe button and come back soon for more amazing discoveries! See you next time! Bye!